Hello and welcome to the DIY McLeod channel. Today I'm going to create a new design. What I'm going to do is create a holder for my microphone. So I want this holder to have a round base so it's sturdy. So it doesn't have to be tall in the base. The 3D printing material is really strong. So all I need for this material is to be sturdy. So let's say two millimeters high and we can go 70 by 70. Since it's so thin, it won't take a while to print anyway. So that's fine. Now for our microphone base, we need to make this piece larger than the measurements I'm gonna cut out for the hole to hold the microphone mechanism. So I'm gonna do 30 there. And I will do, is it 30 by 30? Good. Okay, now it's five right now. I'm gonna bring that down to, yeah, I'll do four. That way, when I do a box to cut out the hole, I'm gonna make this box the measurements I made earlier. So we're gonna do uh, 19 width by 20.5 length. And then the height for this cutout needs to be at least 1.25, but I've decided there's also no harm in making it two. So we'll do two. So now it should be 19 by 0.5, or 19 by 20.5 by two. That's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align these two. So I'm gonna click on both of those or highlight both of them by dragging over both pieces. Click on align. I want them to align in the middle and then in the middle height as well. So I'm gonna zoom in to make sure I click on the middle height here. There we go. Actually, I don't want it to align in the middle. I want it to align at the front so that the hole's right there. So now that I have that done, I can click group and that'll cut the hole out in the piece. And now you can see that hole there. So that works for the mechanism to slide in, but there needs to be a hole up here for the screw to slide with the mechanism. And so I will take another box. And for this box, I'm gonna move it over here so I can see all the measurements. Um, I don't want it to be as big. I want it to be, it was 19. So I know that I need a three lip on each side. So let's do 13. And then this, it was 20.5 and I want a three at least in the back. So let's do 17.5 by 13. Yep, and that should give us the desired outcome. Now for this, I'm going to space it to the top, but I'll still make it two just to make it easier. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna align these two and I'm gonna align it at the top this time of this piece. So we're gonna line at the top, we're gonna line in the middle, and the middle there. No, front there. There we go. Okay. Yep, that should work out well. So now I will combine these again. And there you have it. Now I have my top cut out. When it comes to this top piece, I want it to sit up high, not too high, I think I've decided to make it 50 millimeters. So what I will do, I'm just gonna grab another box, do the same dimensions, make it easier on myself. Okay, so those dimensions were 30 by 30. And I know I want it to sit at 50. So we'll make this number 46. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna have to cut some off in the end, so let's make it as tall as we want for now. Let's make it 60. Okay. There we have it. All right, so now we will align again. We're gonna align at the top, align here in the middle, in the middle. So I am going to actually move this away and I'm gonna tilt it ahead of time. I'm gonna to go to my negative 18. Okay, I want this box to stay standing upright. So what I'll do instead is I'll take a box, I'm gonna make it as long as I want it to be. I'm gonna tilt this at 18 as well. Negative 18. There we go. Okay, now that I have this tilted, I can raise it up. I can do this manually most likely because I made my box big enough to do so. I just wanna make sure I cut off enough of the top there. I think that'll do fine. So now, let me just make sure on all sides it's covered. And it is. 
So now I'll take both of these. I think I'm getting that smaller piece there. Like that. And I'll combine them. And there we go. So now I should be able to put my other piece directly on top. So it looks like we're good to go there. Obviously, they're not attached right now. But what I can do is take it and lower it down because I know they're aligned otherwise. So that looks like they're touching and it's not overlapping in the area where the mechanism needs to fit in. So that looks pretty good. And I can see there's something weird happening in the back there and I get why, but I'm not going to be too worried about that. So what I'll do is just go ahead and combine them. And now what I'll do is I'll grab another box to knock off that edge. So we'll extend it long enough to make sure we get it. And then we'll also make it high enough to make sure we knock it off. So I can bring it in a little bit more to make sure I clean that up nicely. Okay, so now we can recombine these two and it should cut that flat. That looks good. I can tell it's happening in the front as well. And I might as well clean that up as well. So I'll put another box here. Make it as long as you want because it's really just a cutting device. Make it as tall as you want because you want to make sure it covers the area. Get a good angle on it so you can see what's going on. That looks like I don't want to mess with this dimension too much, so I'm going to make sure that should be good. Okay, so I will now go ahead and combine these two. That should do it as far as this piece. So now when we look at it, the mechanism should sit in there. It'll sit at that 18 degrees that we wanted. And what I'm going to do is combine or well, align these two pieces now. So we'll align them in the center, in the center there. And we want it at the bottom, which it is. So what I'm going to do is now that I have my piece aligned well, I can take it. I'm going to do one final operation. And that is to cut off this back edge. That way I can print it the direction that will make it easiest for my printer to print. So I'll do that. I'm going to raise it up as high as I want. doesn't really matter. And now I'm just going to take the slightest cut off that back to make sure it is aligned properly. Let me zoom back in here to make sure I take as slim a cut as I can. It's fine. Okay, so should be good to go. So I'll cut that now. And now my base. Oh no, it didn't cut my base. Did I not combine? Oh, I didn't combine those. Uh -huh. Let me combine all three of these. There we go. Okay, so there you have it. My base is ready to go. And now I can print it laying on its back and it will have zero problems printing. It will not need any support whatsoever. And that's what it's called in the program when you have to add supports. Um, so I won't need supports. I can print it on its back. It'll print really nicely. And now that I'm printing this way, I could actually thin out the inside as well and save time. So what I may do, if we come here, I'll take this. I forget all my dimensions, but I can kind of eyeball it. I know that it was 30 by 30, so I want it to be fairly thick. So let's do, hmm, eh, it doesn't have to be that thick. Let's do 25 by 25. And how tall is that? Too tall. Okay, bring it down just a little bit. Now I should be able to hollow out this inside as long as I keep the alignment to the front. So I'm going to align these pieces, align it at least in the middle. Okay, so I'll move this manually. So I'm going to raise it up at least two because that's where my platform starts. Might as well do three, doesn't hurt anything. And then moving it back. So let's go negative 20. Too far. What if we go negative 10? That looks good, but I know that I took some off the front and back, so I'd rather go negative eight, have it sticking out the front a little bit. Yeah, I'll bring it down. I had it at three. I'd rather it be, let's see. Let's bring it down back to two. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to cut that, and I bet it even will look fairly nice. So now it's like a little podium. 
And since I'm printing at the back, it's not going to affect anything. Uh, if I find that it tilts backwards too much, what I can do is print a separate piece to super glue to this and stabilize it. And that's going to save a ton of time and printing filament. Once you create the file in Tinkercad, you just click export and send it over to your 3D printing software as an STL file. I use a DaVinci Pro 1.0 3D printer and I've been very happy with it. I know some people may not be, but it's worked really well for me. Uh, one of the key things I do is use Gecko Tech on the build plate to hold the workpiece on there really well. And that seems to do a great job. I also print with PETG as a standard printing material for me. I find it to be a great compromise of strength and just general ease of use when it comes to printing material, which on occasion can be difficult. If you enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. It does help me out and it keeps me making these types of tutorials. So think about subscribing. Thank you and check out some other videos.